get my drink of water. Now all the newbies done clicked off because it's like, why is this guy just sitting there drinking water? That's fascinating. Now that we, we got rid of them, we can get down to business. So I have to be real careful what I say today and uh, try to keep my perspective because you know how I told you like I'm more afraid of my family than uh, dying of a heart thing or uh, mangy, sick, aggressive, 150 pound Rottweilers. Well, you know what's coming already. But that's why I told him, I told my brother, think about it. Don't give me an answer now. But he's like already talking about clearing out the space for me to move in and all this and said he'd do it. So I waited a couple of days, I called him back and he's like, uh, changed his mind. Just another gut punch and a long line of gut punches from our family. So it's not a big, not a big surprise. It'll take me a while to get over though. It's not a good, not good timing to, uh, and it's, you know, because of the CRPS hooked into the autonomic system, hooked into the emotions, it doesn't make me feel good physically in a different way than emotional blows might make other people feel bad. So, uh, yeah, I'll be sick for a couple of days. Um, I did walk, uh, not particularly far, just not a short walk for me either, but I mean, you know, there's so much rain out there and water everywhere that uh, I was like, fuck it, man, because there's like the parking lot behind the dentist. There's just big puddles everywhere and little strips of cement. And I'm like, I can try to figure out how to go through there. I can just cut through this way. I can go for the longer walk with all the puddles or I can go this way and take the shorter walk. So I took the shorter walk. Um, but yeah, that's why I have to be careful on here because I have to, you know, I have my own code. And I said some bad shit on here about people in Maslin. I just, you know, I kind of use this as therapy, but I can't go all in. You just can't. Uh, but this is another person that I've supported for. There's something funny about this, though, coming up. But there's another person that I supported through years and years. Years and years and years and years. I need like two, three months out of this fucking place. He's got a spare room and a whole house. And it says, if he would have said no right off the bat, I don't think it's a good idea. That's one thing. But he says, yes, I take a day yesterday and uh, tweak my knee and pack up some boxes and, you know, do as much as I can before it gets dangerous. And uh, then uh, I said, well, I better call him. And I called him and, you know, I could tell by the tone of his voice that something was going on. But uh, it's always nice to hear that, you know, the thought of you moving in with your beloved brother is giving him anxiety attacks. Dude talks to me like two hours at a stretch every other day at he, we rarely go three days without talking on the phone. When we do talk on the phone, it's never 15 minutes. Never. Usually I look at the phone and it's a, like a two-hour conversation, you know, keeping each other company. Sometimes I hang, hang in there just, you know, because you talk a lot about a, lot, a, lot, a bunch of bullshit, surface bullshit. Don't mean nothing. But, uh, might as well move to Akron or someplace away from my family. 
Because they're not going to help. I mean, he knows. I mean, I told him, like, I don't eat sometimes until I skip breakfast and lunch. I don't eat. I told him how depressed I was and how bad off I was. How I just needed a chance to change the scenery. Now I got a huge amount of money, so I'm not staying there out of desperation. I just need a change of scenery. And uh, I guess he had already made up his mind that there's a pregnant cat or something next door that they're going to give him one of the kittens. So, um, so he was worried, maybe worried about like me dropping off my cat, but my, he's going to keep his cat as a complete inside cat, which is, I think is a cruel thing to do to a cat. You know, it just makes them, they, they know there's an outside world. What's the point of that? But, uh, he's done that before. Um, but, uh, anyways, so that clashes with the idea of me bringing my old cat over there, but my old cat didn't show up at all yesterday. He's an outside cat. He just comes in and eats and, you know, sleeps sometimes, has to get petted occasionally, and then just goes about his business. So he just needs, like, a neighborhood. He just have to put food out for him, you know, maybe, uh, if it got really cold, I don't think, you know, he's so old, I don't, he lets this other cat come in here, I mean, I don't think he's gonna care about no kitten anyway, I don't think, uh, he's not the type of animal, um, it's only like he's, it's gonna eat his kitten, the cats, generally speaking, don't work like that, unless you got a psycho cat on your hands, and my cat's more emotionally balanced than either one of us, so, but the funny part about the whole thing is, like, he built this, um, gig you know, this iguana's, I think, four and a half or five feet long. So he built this in gi giant, like, two-tiered um, wood shop type project enclosure, cage, whatever you want to call it, for this iguana. It's bigger than a single bed. So he just took in an iguana for somebody in the family but he won't take me in and the only reason why he gave the iguana back was because it wouldn't eat and it wasn't getting lethargic and it just the change of environment was uh it just couldn't handle the change of environment and uh you know reptiles will do that they'll shut down and not eat so i'll take in an iguana but he won't take in me just for a couple of months and I fixed it could I mentioned I talked to him about some of the things like uh, well you mentioned that if you had a working shower uh, you take showers all the time if, if we could make all that happen but you know he's too afraid to change he said some other stuff I don't remember but I'm not going to repeat it even if I could remember it but the main, t I, I guess I'm a lot. The only thing I'm gonna repeat that he said was like uh, the idea of me living there has given him anxiety attacks the last couple of days. It's like mostly we'll just stay in my room for like, you know, and make sure you have food to eat, fix up your house. But if that causes you anxiety, you have living a better life. But you know, without going into too much. Um, some people prefer to be miserable because it's familiar to them, you know? It's like familiar misery. And uh, I can understand that to a degree, you know? But, because I put up with these people down here for a long time before I was like, Benito, done. You know? You kind of got to accept people for who they are. Yeah, this is a blow. And it blows, too. Because I really kind of shot my wide trying to find a, that Stonehenge place as far as, like, uh, the energy that I got to put towards finding a place. And then when I actually sat down that one day and took a couple hours and looked at apartments, I was like, the only things available are, like, way the hell away from here. I'm not going to 
you don't see any familiar faces, it's going to be like a shot in the unknown. And when you can't walk right, and you got all these physical issues and a bad heart, you know, it's one thing to be a man of adventure in your 20s, like I said, and put $800 in your sock and go someplace you've never been before. That's another thing when you're uh, 52 going on 70. And, uh, you know, you got trouble walking. I had a lot of trouble, like, just boxing shit up yesterday. And I cleared off a end table that was kind of heavy, and I picked it up and threw it on top of uh, uh, the, the couch that's turned up on end. I made sure I didn't break any damn windows, because I was like, I watched the legs against the windows. When I do this, uh, but yeah, there's, I don't know. You know, it, there's really not no way to work through something like like this. Um, you can go to a psychiatrist and you can talk about it. And, uh, you know, they'll give you platitudes and you know say the say various things to try to make you feel better. But I mean. I'm all, I'm all for like expressing myself, but it's like, uh, you're not really, you can't relate to the situation unless you've been kind of through it. I mean, I, I imagine like everybody has family that's difficult, but, uh, you know, actively beating you up while you got a chronic pain disease. It's like, I told him right off don't think about it don't make a decision now and then he makes a decision and then he reverses the decision after and I'm like well at least I'll get a change of scenery I even called uh, my uh, cousin in Florida because the last time I was so depressed I was like man I'm so depressed I can't even think of anything to talk about dude so I'm just gonna not waste your time and he was tired after work anyway and you know so I called him up and I said, well, I got something to talk about this time. He's like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, and I was like, I yeah, think so. So what do I do now, you know? I can't sit around and just be bummed out about it. I don't know, like, I don't want to get in that resentment train, like with my sister, where I supported them, support them, and support them, and then you need their help, and it's smack in the face. Just, it's just so self-destructive, you know, from his point of view, because dude don't got no hot water, you don't got no showers, it's like heating up water and putting it in a bucket to get cleaned up and shit, I could change all that, when, no skin off my nose whatsoever, but he's got that anxiety issues, and he's got issues, issues, anybody growing up in my house, just so you know, growing up with people that kill people and talk about it, it's just, if that's your father, that's not a good thing. It affects people in different ways. But, um, yeah. So I was like, you're getting out there and walking, rain or no rain. You gotta keep moving. It's like, you're not gonna be able to work this out. You know, you're not going to be able to talk it out. You're not going to be able to work it out. It's just something. It's like talking your way out of a cut. You know, like you kind of cut yourself on the arm, or when I cut myself on the leg, like talking to my leg, I'm trying to heal my leg by talking at it. Just you get wounded, and you just give it time. Try to get over it. Try not to let it fester. We'll keep the metaphor going. Try not to let the infection set in like it did with my sister. And I didn't front him out yesterday, you know, but I'll have to do that. I'll have to be like, look, man, uh, to be honest, I was honest with my sister, too. But, I mean, I didn't, you know, I said, it's your house, man. It's your choice. That's about all I would say about it. Because uh, I did bring up some of the points, like, you know, I you know, just be there for uh, reiterated some of the points I made before, but I didn't like say, you know, it's just a majorly uncool thing you just did, but I'm gonna have to do that. 
And uh, as far as like keeping him company when he's asleep, because he's got like insomnia and shit, and just listening to him for hours until he can talk himself out because he's lonely. I ain't doing that no more. He wants, if he got serious things to talk about, or if he wants a half an hour or an hour conversation, I could probably do that. But I ain't hanging on for his sake, you know. Not a lot of fun for me to listen to somebody talk about fishing anyway. You know, might as well, I'm, might as well talk to a man in the desert about water when he, he don't have any or he can't drink. Yeah, not what I needed at this particular time because I did not make my phone calls yesterday to find out like if the transportation thing is still set up and rolling even with the COVID thing. So I can get to the dentist, you know, because I've got to address that. And I'm just going to live like uh, there's no COVID. And that, that doesn't mean I'm going to go around French kiss, kissing strangers. It just means like I'm, you know, just going to go about my business as usual. As best I can. And just stop taking precautions about it. And, uh, because I don't think, you know, it's not nothing they're going to fix anyway. I'm going to need to find a doctor. I'm going to need to, you know, get dental treatment. I'm going to need to get on top of shit. So if I don't get on top of shit, man, I'm going to fall in, you know, I'm going to fall into that well of resentment and hate and shit. You know, he dead. For a second time. But I thought it was better than an iguana. I got more money than an iguana. I can't say I'm better looking though, because iguanas, man, they're pretty interesting looking creatures. But I'm friendlier than an iguana. Iguana, man, is a vicious motherfucker. That iguana there, man, you don't want to fuck with him. You don't want to fuck with no four or five foot iguana. They get you with the tail, they get you with the claws. I don't know if they bite. But I've seen somebody attacked by an iguana and they don't fuck around and it's fast. There's, you wouldn't think a reptile would be that fast. Unless you're a kid like me trying to catch snakes and stuff. But, well, I guess you would. Everybody knows rattlesnakes are fast. So, yeah, let's scratch that part right there. It wasn't too clever. But, um, no, it's just like one minute, you know, he's reaching in the cage with that iguana. This is years ago. My foster brother. Next minute, he's just got blood and scratches all over him. Second time, he, I mean, it's just like that. Thing's whipping him with its tail, it's just going. It, it's like cut going off on him like a whirlwind. Uh, but, yeah. I had some thoughts this morning, like, you know. If I had a gun, I'd just put the cat down. Because the cat's getting old. It's got nothing but suffering in its future. And uh, I did have some thoughts like that. You know, I, I wouldn't want to live with that. But uh, taking him out of this neighborhood is not acclimating him to a place and getting him used to a new person. And, you know, I don't know it's just another thing to worry about. So yeah, I can't, you know, I can't have a firearm anyway, because I wouldn't be here, because uh, it's just too logical, it just makes too much sense for me to quit. Uh, it's It'd be different, like, if I didn't have the highest rated uh, pain generating disease and didn't go to sleep and wake up. In pain every single fucking day and be in pain every single second of my life and it's like yeah fuck you know when people complain about pain and people yeah everybody got pain this is CRPS pain it's a little different you know this is something that affects my digestive system and excretory functions and affects everything it's, it's just different it's just uh, let's just say I'm a big fan of Dr. Kaporkin I'm not just having these thoughts just because my brother 
I've talked about this shit before. Uh, it's not, it wasn't totally unexpected from my brother, you know. I was still surprised because usually, when he says something, he'll usually do it. You know, his track record is 99.9. Because, .9 you know, he don't just say shit. He, maybe he doesn't understand how bad that he needs that help or who knows. But it's just fear of change, you know. It's, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to think of and remember the things that he said because um, I, just, you know, just want to give him that little bit of privacy. But still, you know, it's my life. I, I got a right to, to uh, express part of it on here. And uh, he, he just, that whole rug pulled out from underneath your feet thing. Don't lay out the red carpet, man. And just say no. If, you know, or just say, I'll think about it. Don't talk about clearing out a space in the room and, you know, make it seem like it's going to happen. I mean, I thought it was going to happen. But, yeah. Now I got to figure out what to do with my day and, you know, how not to fall into that black pit of despair from living here. I just wanted to change the scenery for a couple of months. So it's just so stupid, you know, from my point of view, from a, it's just stupid, it's a stupid move. I mean, why, you got the room, but you, you don't want, like, your house fixed up, your most trusted person, I think I'm his most trusted person, maybe the sister that kicked me to the curb, maybe he, that's the most trusted person. But I feel like I talk to him the most. I just don't see him very often. And I'm, you know, it's always giving him extra food and shit that I have. Man, that's cold. That's going to eat at him. He, you know, this stuff carries its own punishments with it. So I just have to be honest with him about my feelings. Say that, yeah, I'm going to feel some resentment over that. You know, even if. I know that he's going to torture himself over it, and, you know, because uh, I broke his word, so, the weird part is, like, I know that he called my best friend, or he said he talked to him, since, you know, I, since he said he let me move in, so I just wondered what he, if he discussed that, or what he said, but I'm not going to do that to my friend, I'll just bring it up, but I don't want to ask no questions, because I, under, I understand what, exactly what's going on, it's fear, anxiety, fear of change, you know, I think, I think he did say something like, you just end up hating me or something. I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> it's funny part is like when I lived with the uh, last time I lived with somebody, they did they were knocking on my door and bothering me because I, was, I wasn't around enough for them. It's like, um, yeah, you wouldn't probably be, you probably wouldn't be interacting all that much. Uh, just be in your house. You know, you have a full refrigerator and you could take have hot water and take showers when you want. I think you need like not just the hot water but need like um like a replacement. You know like those shower fitting things I don't know what they're called. Where you just install like a whole thing over top of the old uh worn out tub bathroom outfitters or whatever. But yeah, that's the hard part is like, like, life's hard enough for me and now I got to try to like deal with this and then I haven't really been any, you know, because the COVID thing, I haven't um, made many uh, phone calls or, of, you know, related to doctor's appointments or gone anywhere except for out for my morning walks. 
and uh, I have to go to the dentist. I got this weird issue, like I said, going on with the uh, volume two, where the dude can't prescribe without seeing me face to face. It's a new law, according to the person I talked to on the, the phone. It's a nurse Kathy. And, uh, I'm trying to remember like when he last prescribed for me. He probably last prescribed for me before the COVID. So the law might be a new law like within the last few months before COVID ever took over Ohio. So they might not have changed the law during the COVID time because that wouldn't make any sense at all. It's like, oh, we got a pandemic. We want you to stay in your houses, but all you people that need a certain type of, uh, all you opiate people with your chronic pain diseases and your uh, benzodiazepine people with your anxiety issues, uh, you can't get your drugs unless you leave your house. So leave your house, but you can't get your drugs. You know, you know what I'm saying? It just wouldn't make any sense. But I don't remember how, I think I had like three refills on it. So probably like three months ago which would make uh, the original prescription uh, pre-COVID. Uh, my voice is going on me a little bit. So this is the face of devastation. Still didn't get my hair right. Well, I didn't shave it. I spent time packing up boxes. I don't know. I remember shaving my head. And one time I did it being a pain in the ass, but uh, clippering it with the clippers I got, I don't know. Well, I took 10 milligrams of uh, Valium yesterday because I had to take the rent and because I'm packing up boxes and lifting things and picking up tables and, you know, head high and slamming them on top of couches and doing stuff like that. So my leg was like, eh, we don't like this very much. See, I don't mind, like, you know, not getting um, support from your family when you need it. But when you give, 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 and you don't get back, that's when the hatred and the resentment comes. You know, you give, 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 and then when you need help, this is what you get. You get what uh, Abe Pagoda got in The Godfather. Can you cut me a little break? I saw a Richard Pryor thing about that. I'll put a clip, or I'll put a, anybody that wants a laugh after this, uh, I'll put like a link down there for uh, Richard Pryor's Mafia bit. But yeah, that's where it comes from. It's different if like your family, but you, you're not sticking your neck out for them all the time, helping them out and stuff. And it's like, that's why I said family's the most terrifying thing to me in the world. This isn't as bad as what my sister did. Cause all I needed from my sister was some kind words and some support. You know, this is an imposition. This is somebody moving into your house for a few months. Cause I was thinking we, you know, we're both old. I'm definitely on the way out. You know, I'm not going to be an old old man. That's not going to happen. Um, how long he's going to live? Who knows? You know, he takes real good care of himself, but. Yeah. I mean, as far as like he doesn't smoke, you don't drink, that kind of shit. But you know, you never know. Well, I thought it would be nice hang out a little bit with them before, um, before um, I die. But you like I said, you're not dealing like that video I made like a couple of days ago where it said. That, Sometimes an idea makes too much sense, you know, it just makes too much sense, so. You can, you can always do that thing where you can turn it around in your head and you can be like, well, it's for the best, you know, it's for the best. Yeah. Trying to reconnect with my family and like, I want, kind of wanted to live there too because I wanted to try to fix that shit with my sister. And, uh, put paid to that 
one of the interesting things is like one of the last things she said to me was uh, I'm over it and I'm like over what? like what did I do to you? I broke down and asked you for help so you're over it? Like, you're, you're acting like I injured you somehow? no that's not what she said let me get this exactly right she said I'm already past it you know I'm already past it and it's like okay and uh, she might have said I'm over it too like in another conversation because um, in another part of the conversation because like when I called her back and I tried to fix it it was a, it was a long conversation so she might have said both so but the, I think she said I was I'm already over it or I'm already past it I guess it doesn't really make much difference but I like to be exact in language you know because of the uh, connotations and the, the nuances and shades of meaning that I love so much I have a feeling my lighting is not doing me any favors uh, this morning but you know uh, but yeah I kind of wanted to fix that too and I thought well you know it's be good for me and be the last time that I have like you know face to face interactions with my brother and have a few months together and you know because I'm going to go off and die somewhere I don't see myself living uh, in the old age I mean I got to be realistic uh, when you you got heart issues like it, you got issues upon issues man you got to be realistic about this shit the bad part is I have to see this out you know at least see part of this out because I'm dying here and you know maybe they make it easier on my family maybe just move far away from them and let, have limited interaction with them and get them used to being without me you know because I don't I don't see an assisted living like nursing home type situation for me I see like you know trying going to doctors and if it doesn't work out well it just only makes sense you know it's like with with my dad like like when my dad died just because we already separated from each other and we're already unplugged emotionally um i didn't feel much when he died so it was easier it's just easier for people and i think that's like i said i think that's the motivation be, behind my sister like not putting in, just like pushing me away and not putting any effort into reconciling she's like just protecting herself emotionally because um it's a twisted form of love but it is love like uh, she doesn't want to get hurt you know because parents death happened both in uh, 2015 and uh, somewhere around 2017 somewhere around one of my heart issues she was like I can't take another loss you know I can't take uh, losing some uh, somebody else so you kind of do like a preemptive strike you like push the person away and you disengage from them emotionally and that way they're still alive and they're still out there and you can play your mind games about oh somehow we'll get together or whatever but you're disengaged so when they die you don't feel it the same way like um when my mother died you know that was a mule kick to the stomach but I didn't cry over it because um she had uh slid into dementia and was in dementia for a lot of years so when I saw her I think she recognized me uh, a couple of times but it was like that you know I just held her hand and I'm like you know look her get up close so she could see me I'm like you know who I am I don't remember if she ever said my name and stuff I remember holding her hand and stuff uh, when I finally went back there but you know I don't like to uh, remind family members of this shit but see my brother was taking care of my mom and my mom was like keeping it secret that she was 
you know, sliding into the dementia. Like, she was, like, doing stuff, like, not taking care of the bills. Or, like, uh, I think they were finding mail in the garbage that she didn't even open up. You know, she started acting erratically, and they kept it quiet. And then I would talk to my brother, and my brother would talk to me about, you know, how bad she was getting. And then he was reaching a breaking point, and I'm like, well, I got to do something to help him. So I talked to the, the uh, sister that I've been talking about, and I was like, explain the situation. And nobody in the family knew what was going on uh, besides me and my brother. So I, you know, helped my brother out in that way because he was taking care of her like 24-7. And then... Um, my sister went over there and she'd go over there and like relief, you know, give him some relief from it. And he occasionally would get to go somewhere, or, uh, just rest, you know, just rest. Because we got somebody with dementia, if you don't tie them in the bed, you know, they're liable to get up. That's talking about old people walking around up and down the street, you know, so he'd sleep in the same room with her. And, uh, you know, keep one eye open like he was looking for engines out on the planes and wasn't sleeping well and stuff. That's my stomach. Um, and so, it's another contribution that I made. I brought that up um, organically to somebody else in the family. And nobody knew what was. It was because I had said that I was talking to uh, her, my mom's sister, and that uh, she was like going through dementia, and she's like there some of the time, and some of the time, like she, she, you know, you know, I talked about that before. Like I'll be like, I love you, and she has to have an interpreter, you know, say he said he loves you, you know. And she'll say, I love you back, and I love you very much, or whatever. So it's like my mom all over again, but it's my mom's sister. And um, when I was younger, I had another one of my mom's sisters that I was really close to. And But, um, you know, after I got the t spinal tumor and stuff, I kind of like split from that household. And then... Um, I saw her like at a family function and I hugged her and you know she had the stricken look on her face either like she didn't know who the hell I was or like she was like it was just a stricken look I, I don't know what was going on behind it but I was I was like it's good to see you you know and I just gave her a hug and she had this look on her face like what the hell did time do to you or like maybe it was guilt for not keeping in contact who knows what's behind those looks if you're estranged from a person, maybe she's like, who the fuck is this big motherfucker hugging me? I don't know this guy at all. Because, you know, I used to go over all the, there all the time when I was a little kid. Um, in single digits all the way up to when I was 15. And we went, I went to the same school as her son for a while, so a couple of times I'd stay over there and go to school uh, with uh, her son. We'd ride the same bus into school. Ride his bus in the school instead of my bus in the school. And we lived in different cities, but we went to the same uh, school for a while. Um, I think I'm remembering that right. <laughs> it's been a lot of years. That's the way I remember it. Uh, it'll, it'll become clear like when I'm already off here. That's, that's what happens a lot of times because I don't think about these things. On a daily on a daily basis. So, anyways, like nobody knew what was going on with my mom, and you know, I was like, I helped him out a lot just by, you know, always being there. You know, I couldn't be there physically because I had the thing going on with my dad. It's too complicated to get get into, and uh, it's not a fixable thing. And uh, it's like. It's just too complicated. I think I handled that all wrong. So I think that I fucked that up. I should have just done things differently. So maybe like one person that's listening to this will understand what I'm talking about. Because I 
like I said, I had like a leaked therapy disc that had all the dirt, dirty details on it. And I, and, uh, I gave that disc to uh, one of those people I excommunicated, and they just, I just did it as a gesture. I was like, you know, I got through this shit, you can get through your shit. And uh, they just like lost it, never watched it. It's just floating around out in space somewhere. I never got it back. And I know, you know, this, this person was doing crack at the time. And I offered him 40 bucks to get, to find it. So I know that it's lost. Or somebody has it and uh, is just not giving it up. Because um, they had, this person had a relationship where they broke up with somebody. So maybe that somebody has it. And it's just holding on to it for who knows why. But anyways, I, that's why I put it like in a secret account on here. And I'm like, it's already out there that way. You know. Um, the whole filthy story is, uh, it's, um, yeah. Out of respect for my family that hates me, I don't, I don't, uh, I keep the views on that very low. So. But I, I figured, like, it's out there anyway, you know. It's not my fault, in a way. It's my fault for being stupid and naive and all the time holding people to standards that they ain't up to. So I should have never done that. Never trust them with that. And, uh, like, uh, I heard the other day that they're uh, still wrapped up. Uh, unless it was an old story. It could have been an old story. Fuck that tooth starting to bother me. But uh, it reminded me of when I had that crack dealer parked outside and I lost my shit. And I was like, uh, until I got to get the fuck out of here. And I lost my temper on some dude that was backing away from me. And I'm like, man, this guy's a fucking pussy. Because I ain't exactly terrifying no more. I mean, I'm ferocious as fuck when I get angry. But it's like, you got to like override your instincts, dude. And let's look at what you're looking at. The reason why I'm telling you to tell him to get the fuck out of there is because it's going to look really stupid for me to walk down the steps like this, one step at a time, and go out and break bad with some guy I don't even know in a truck. Because the guy in the truck, he's trying to he's trying to get money off me for crack for his girlfriend. And uh, I was like, I don't give a damn what it's for. You know, at first, it's, it's like... Uh, but I don't go over twenty dollars. So I had like a twenty dollar rule because of the leeches over there. And uh, he was like, "Well, you know, she owes this guy." I'm like, "I don't know if I believe any of this shit because people don't front crack." Generally speaking, it's like I'll pay, I, I will gladly pay you uh, Tuesday for some crack today, Popeye. You know, it doesn't work like that. You know, there could be, like, sexual favors involved or some kind of thing like that. You know, maybe. But there's no, like, upfront. <laughs> there's no, like, a layaway crack deals out there. So, um, anyways, um, that day, like, uh, I was, I would have went up to the truck and just said, L listen, motherfucker, because I was, like, fit to be tied. Because he called, sitting outside, and was basically asking, did you get any money out of the dude yet? You know. And, uh, yeah, I don't think that guy outside was the big boss. I think he was a, a mule. I give a fuck who he was. If I had healthy legs, he was in danger that day. Um, if he didn't have a gun or a knife. I wouldn't have went out there probably empty. I probably would have went out there empty handed. It would have been in broad daylight. He would have had to fuck me up right with people watching. Because I'm loud. And uh, it, it was right. They, they were parked right in front of these people that are usually out and about and got dogs and shit. So. But, anyways, the point is, is like I couldn't walk out there anyway. And this guy is like backing away and not taking his eyes. Literally had his hands up. Like, don't get upset. I'll go out and talk to the guy. I was like, tell him to get the fuck out of here. And you tell him the next time I see his fucking truck, I'm taking down his license plate. Calling the police. And, uh, oh, I was so mad. Um, anyways, the point of that little digression into my joyous past, I believe. 
was um, I had taken care of uh, that situation with my mom from like the outside and like puppet mastered a situation that was better for everybody in the family and um because they were keeping it secret for some godforsaken reason that you know both of them were keeping it secret that she was that bad off and he was at the breaking point and i made sure he had some relief and some help and then you know I'm, i was on call like 24 7 for him stop whacking off pick up the phone if you stop that as to make a phone call man, or to answer a phone call man I'm, yeah. but for me to expect to get paid back that's why you don't do like stuff to get paid back, but you can't help feeling that way. You know, you can't help feeling that resentment. Like, like, done all this shit for you, and you can't do this for me. You know, like with the dude with the boat. Like, like all the shit that I done helped you out with. You know, it's the thing I was trying to orchestrate from the outside. Is I was trying to help my brother out by giving him, throwing money into the boat and getting the boat on the water, and you know that story. Trying to get him out of the house, and I had my foster brother who grew up and hung out more than I did with the guy that was stuck taking care of uh, my dementia ridden mother uh, to help him out and he wouldn't even do it you know and I actually forgave him for that because he owned up to it and um, I didn't forget it but I forgave him I was able to talk to him and um, but like I said, the breaking point is um, I started setting limits on how much money they could borrow. And then they were bringing over crack dealers over here asking for 60 instead of uh, 20. It's like, never hurts to ask, you know. Like, no, nah, it ain't happening. And then I found out, then the guy like left, circled around and came back and had a crack whore in the, uh, passenger seat and I'm like the guy and then that's what pissed me off is the guy sat out there and made the phone call and uh, you know I was like I was gone at that point and I was asking questions like, like you know is there going to be some uh, bloodshed over this like I don't didn't use that word but basically that's what I meant is like you know if this guy you tell me what's going on here and he's the best he could do is like he's like I don't know it's a black guy and I'm like what the fuck does that have to do with anything I don't give a fuck about that it doesn't matter at all I'm not that's not what I asked you I asked you if the guy doesn't get money if he's gonna hurt this other person physically and it's like it's enough with that drama you know and uh it's an, I think it's enough with just it's enough family and I got this other family member that's going through this huge thing right now. And, um, yeah, it's not being the supportive guy. You don't get it back. You know. And, and I'm not, if they, if they call and they ask me for help, that's one thing. But I'm not sticking my neck out no more. Just to get it chopped off. I mean, fuck that. It's just, this is just such bad timing for this, you know. Because I needed a change of scenery. And I just don't have the, uh, you know, I've got the despair and the depression going on. So I don't really have the will to do all these things that I need to do. And meanwhile, you know, i got uh, the hounds of hell in my mouth. Barking down my trail. Because I am at a crossroads, brother. Little Robert Johnson for you. Hellhounds on my trail. Hellhounds in my mouth, man, because <laughs> deal with that. That's what, but the only thing you can do is look at it this way. It's like this is the way. Um, maybe things are better this way. You can't know that 
you know, you can't know how things would have went down. But maybe this is the way it's supposed to be. You can take that kind of attitude, or if you're a religious person, you can say maybe this is God's will that you need to break completely away from everything that you didn't know and all the people that you love and at an advanced age be Abraham and go out and fuck, you know, you can do all that religious shit if you want to about it, you know. Because Abraham was an old fucker when he got, to, when he decided to start on his travels. And I think he had a good set of legs because he had to do a lot of fucking walking. Uh, and what can I say? I mean, I can hang on here and, you know, run through all the old sorry stories of the past. And there's plenty of times that I've failed. I don't like, want to make it sound like I was always the good guy. I can honestly say that I've always tried to be the good guy and I've always tried to do the right thing. You know, there's lots of times where there are sins of omission, as we would call them in the Catholic Church, where I could have done better. But uh, there's other, but like if I knew a, a situation was going on, I would try to help. I'd try to do what I could. Um, you know, like when the folks over here. Uh, furnace went out on them and they didn't have enough money and uh, dude asked me to borrow $200 while the furnace guy is there saying that it's worse than I thought you need this part and that part and I laid the money down and then after that I was like I'm forgiving all debts because I owe this person you know you owe me 200 for the furnace this person owes me $60, this person owes me $20, I'm like, like $20 limit on anything, I don't give a damn what the fucking reason is, $20 limit as far as loaning money, and then they come back here and test me on it, you know, asking for 60 and uh, yeah, but the real, you know, this is repeats, but the real breaking of the straws with them, or like the straw that broke the camel back was a uh, uh, the fact that they didn't give a fuck that that maniac was living here and I did everything I could to keep him from going over there and starting trouble and disrupted my day and played therapy uh, with the guy and got him, got him drinking coffee and got it, you know, try and like not sober him up because that doesn't really work drinking coffee, sobering him up, but uh, tried to get his, you know, gave him some volume, tried to get him calmed down, like you just want to go out o over there and sit your grandma's sitting on the porch, your mom's not home. You just want to go see your grandma. It's not, you know, so he ends up going over there and punching the street and making a big scene and shit. And they gave me a bunch of shit for that. And it's like, like, I told him, I didn't, I didn't tell my uh, foster brother that, but I told him, um, the aunt that gave me my first benzodiazepines since when I moved in here, uh, after I moved in here, I told the aunt, like, like, look, I did everything I could to, to do, defuse that situation. What do you want me to do? Tackle him? I'm in no shape to stop him from uh, going down there if he's going to go down there. And, you know, I was like, like, that was it for me. It's like, like, I'm trying to help you fucking people and you're giving me shit. And, you know, I wouldn't be addicted to benzos if it wasn't for you people. I paid for your fucking furnace, you know pay for you helped you with your fucking habits supporting your habits by loaning you money i'd be written off debts i mean i i don't know i think it was I, I don't know what the hell it was for but i was told it was for, for, for christmas but like i had paid i didn't i don't give a fuck about no clean house but i had somebody from that household come in here pay them 60 bucks to clean up my house and they did like most of it, I'd say three quarters of it, and they were like, oh, I'll come back and, fin and get to the bathroom and finish up. And it's like, they never come back because I gave them 60 bucks. You know, I, was, I didn't expect them to. <laughs> it's like, I might have I might have died prematurely if they did come back after that. But yeah, Integrity is sort of a lost thing these days. And, uh, yeah. 
situation with my brother is a little different. You know, but it's just up to me to try to um, put it in perspective and not let it bother me too much. I just wanted out of here and I thought, you know, like I said, we're probably not going to see each other on a regular basis ever. So, um, that would have been like a chance to have a nice summer together and sit and talk. I mean, we talk all the goddamn time over the phone anyway. What the fuck's the difference? But I'm not him. And, uh, he never breaks his word, though, you know, it's like, uh, he never breaks his word, he takes his word deadly serious, and so that's like, that was hard for him to uh, do yesterday, he's like, having anxiety attacks thinking about me living with him, well, you know what, it's like, the only thing I'm going to do is just be honest, and, uh, Tell him like and try and tell him how I feel without getting too bad about it, you know. I probably won't call him for a couple of days and just let it sink in and let it settle. And um see how it goes, but uh, I'll have to like make let my feel make my feelings known. It's like uh but I don't wanna make him feel too bad because he's got issues. That's, the, that's what a fucking dickhead nice guy I am. Uh, I don't want to remind him of all that past shit of how I looked out for him his whole goddamn life. Best I could. Another shit that, uh, yeah. Oh, there's, like, documentation on here of, uh, like, the night before I have to wake up early and go get this bone scan thing where they inject the radioactive isotope. He's playing uh, games with me on the phone. Not like moral support. I didn't expect moral support, but I don't expect people to fuck with me the night that I have to go for a six hour test. It's going to take six hours, but they inject you with the isotope and then they send you home or you can sit in the hospital for a couple hours before it gets in your system and then they put you in an MRI machine. And, uh, you know, it's a big ordeal for a healthy, for a, it's annoying for a healthy person, you know. Uh, but yeah, he's giving me shit before that, so, you know, that, that's actually on here. And, uh, I got super pissed off over that. I don't remember what I said to him, but, uh. Support, but abuse, you don't always expect support, but you don't expect abuse when you have a history of, like, helping people out, looking for them, looking, looking out for them, you know? So, that time was pretty bad, because it's like, why are you fucking verbally fucking with me? You should be, like, supportive and, like, you know, telling me it'll be alright, and it's like, call me, you shouldn't be like, fucking with me, and playing debate, verbal games with me about, oh, you said this, and no, that's, you know, like, like, if the roles were reversed, and you were actually taking care of yourself, and putting yourself through some test like that, you'd be a fucking basket case, so you should have some goddamn empathy, I don't remember what the fuck I said to him, but over this situation here, it's just like, he done a bad thing to himself as well as me because he's going to be tortured over this because he gave his word and broke it and he said he'd do something and he changed his mind about doing it even though I repeatedly told him, you know, think about it first, think about it first, but then he's like, well, I could do this and I could do that and, you know just kind of led me to believe because he didn't shut if he's going to say no since I know him he shut me down like right away and uh, 
like I said, I knew he wasn't in the last video. Like I knew he wasn't turning cartwheels over the idea, but he seemed to have accepted it. And there was even like we after, you know, I was like, let us think about it, you know. And I, we had like upbeat conversation after that, usual nothing conversation after that. But I, was, I did tell him to think about it, so he thought about it. But, uh, and his anxiety got to him. Oh, are you still with me? You are? Well, it must be because of my new haircut. I got these bruises on my arm from falling into the wall. I noticed that in another video. I was like, oh, I got bruises on my elbow. I got bruises here. And, uh, yeah, you know, sorting this out, so I really might as well go, and I've already been talking for an hour. Let's see what we got here. I'm so blind. Yeah, almost exactly an hour. So there's no wrapping it up or putting a bow on it. You know, it is what it is. It's just like, uh, it's just going to make the hard things that I have to do harder, you know. And, um... I didn't call the real estate agent guy yesterday because, I mean, how many fucking messages can you leave and how many texts can you text somebody if they're not returning? Those that are still there, the dude's a fucking professional, you know, it's like, I suppose I could try that again and call the dude, you know, or I could call like, um, the, uh, therapy, I could try to get a heart the guy's name's Mark I could try to get a hold of the guy that prescribes the volume and you know we're supposed to have an appointment on the tw a phone appointment on the 28th and um my prescription it, it the, on the bottle it says the 1st of July but really I picked it up on the 5th so they go by when you pick it up they don't go by that you know you know what I'm saying so that, that, that one on that bottle don't mean nothing. It's when you pick it up that matters. So uh, you can't, in other words, I can't go in there on the first and uh, get a refill if I had a refill if I pick it up on the fifth because they go by when you pick it up. Um, but I got to do like some kind of video conferencing or something with the dude or she said maybe he'll agree to a face-to-face, -face, but he has to see my face. You know, like that's going to matter. I'm a good poker player. Like that's going to matter seeing my face. If he's going to, he's going to tell what's going on. Probably smarter than the guy anyway. That's the last of the coffee. And I think that's the last of the chatter. That's unfortunate, but... Uh, people that tend to behave badly, they tend to, uh, I'm, I want to quote, I want to do a Bible quote now. They, they tend to carry a recompense. I think it's from Romans. They tend to carry the recompense within their own bodies. You know, so that's why you want to be good. You want to have a clean conscience. It's like my dad paid with heart attacks and strokes and his brothers paid with heart attacks and strokes. And, uh, you know, you pay for the, the bad things that you do physically. And I know my brother will be putting himself through some things uh, over this. But, so I don't, I don't have to punish him, but I have to be, I have to take care of myself and get them, my own emotions up. You know, and not just like do what I did yesterday, like just say, well, it's your house, man, it's your decision. I have to say, like, you know, I don't want to feel resentful for you, but, you know, it's like, it was just going to be for a couple of months, and I just need a little help. And I feel like I've helped you in the past. You know, and it's probably going to make him feel worse, but I, I that's, that's the breaks, you know, but I have to. Uh, Steve, Stephen is actually a martyr in the Bible, so my mom named me after a martyr. So, um, 
that got stoned, so not the good way either. So, uh, yeah, I didn't know my family was going to be the ones throwing the rocks, though. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm out for here. I'm just going to be depressing anyways, like I haven't been already. Um, I have to rewatch to see what, oh, I was going to put a link down there for the, uh, you know, the mercilessness thing that fit into my monologue somehow. That's a, one of my favorite Richard Pryor bits. But anyways, I'll see you soon. I won't say tomorrow. And today I'll try to do something. I'll probably still continue to p pack things at least. It depends on how my legs are. And maybe call, like I said, real estate agent or the uh, physical therapist guy. And maybe call my dentist. It just depends. It's just, it's really hard to do things when you're in this frame of mind and then you get, you know, the old gut punch, the old kick in the nuts. And uh, get the, that, car that carpet pulled out from underneath your feet. So I can't say what I'm going to be like today. But anyways, uh, I hope I hope you're having better luck in this life than me. And if you're not, God help you. <laughs> but anyways, 